Hey, you crazy cats. 42's live streams and videos are simply not available on vinyl. You will have to go to the YouTubes for that. So if you want content about British traditions and culture, cutting edge social commentary from an unapologetically patriotic perspective, along with a side order of madness you simply will not find anywhere else, then this is the place for you. And to all those early adapters in the chat, don't forget to hit the notification bell. That's how you get the good stuff and make sure you never miss a tasty treat. So with that being said and done, squeeze yourself in. Let's get into it, you know you want to. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. Please to leave this applicable because the internet is worldwide and time zones are indeed a thing. Can I get a wee audio check in the chat, please? And I'll start saying a couple of hellos. Uh, what have we got here? We've got Julia Skinner says she's going to see us later, so I think she's going. Sandra's spicy Spanish salami sandwich. You were in Sansom's chat. That's how you've got here. Thank you very much for coming over. Uh, I'm going to have a look at this thing shortly. Uh, Sansom, all about you. The wonderful, sexy Emma G is in. Rill is in. What about you, Sean? Evening, brother. October. Hasdaq. Hi. Thank you, Sansom. The sound is me. Uh, who else have we got? It's real again. The alphabet cat. Alphabet cat, we young time to see my little caddies. Welcome aboard. Al Mac, what about you, Chum? Very glad to see you here. Uh, actually, I'll come, I'll come back to that whenever I've done the, uh, the rest of those. Anglo, what about you, Chum? Even brother. When Stoner Smith. Evening, Edmund's in, Martin, the Budgie Burger, what about you, Sean? Bass, what about you, glad to have you aboard. Right, yes. Before say, before say anything else, Almac uh, has sent me the album version of Harmony, Melody and Rhyme, which has the lead guitar solo in it. And it is fucking epic. Nah, this is where I'm getting educated about the whole music thing. The version for Facebook has the sounds turned down and stuff because Facebook, or not Facebook, YouTube, Uh, yes, Emma G, Emma G is true. It does. It sounds amazing. Uh, yes, the version for YouTube, there's a lot of levels are lo lo lower down because YouTube compresses everything. To hear this song properly, you're going to need to get the uh, album version whenever that goes out on Spotify. And it's fucking excellent. Uh, I, might ha I may possibly be coming on to the call in later on because... We've got stuff to talk about because we have been up the mischief. Oh, yes, we have indeed. It is indeed. Uh, so there's that. Uh, next thing, a very warm welcome to everyone who came along from Sansom's News of the Ape with Toffee earlier. Uh, I was lurking. Uh, Emma G and I were looking uh, for most of that show. Um, as always, I missed a chunk in the middle uh, when I would take Emma G up home. But uh, that was a good show. Uh, well done. Um... <laughs> uh, 
mischief. Yes, she knew me and Al were up to something. Emma, you're going to be up to mischief as well whenever you're assisting me with the filming. Uh, so there's that. Special K and Acids and Lurk Mode. I was lurking earlier on on a different stream, so yeah, that's fine. We're all good with lurkers. Um, welcome aboard. Yes, yeah, so welcome to everybody who came from Sansom and Toffee. Anybody that's here that doesn't generally watch Sansom and Toffee's show, War with Bonnie Lad, whatever it is Sansom's doing earlier on a Saturday. If, if you like my stuff, you're going to like their stuff, so you probably want to give that a look. So that's good. I have a couple of other bits of housekeeping to go through. Uh, Sunday night, 7 p.m., that's tomorrow. Ragnar Arnspear is doing the rag, Rags and Jack show, and his guest is former RAF pilot, writer, and performance coach, Tim Davies. Tim is cool. Tim, uh, Tim knows a thing or two about a thing or two, and it's always a good show with him on, so check on that. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to get that Emma G. I am indeed going to be getting to that. Uh, also, uh, catch up with John Davidson streams at 9 p.m. on Tuesdays and Fridays. However, whether or not John's going to stream is not set in stone because, as you know, he's got medical health issues at the moment. And if he's up to streaming, he streams. If he's not up to streaming, he doesn't stream. But keep an eye for that. Uh, there you go. And also, as I always say, uh, oh, I think you are here, Mr. Waffle House. Uh, yes. So, Dave's Waffle House, half past eight, pretty much every night apart from, uh, apart from a Saturday. Sometimes it's only sometimes not. Uh, it's a good crap. It's a good. It's good fun. Friday hearted. He banters with a chat. Uh, it's basically dribble for an hour and a half. And at times you can actually win some quite good prizes. And oh, hold on, that did not go just as expected. So. One second, I get this up there. Right. right. And as evidence of winning good prizes, have a look at this. Oh, yes. See this, uh, this little man who is in a rock and he's right beside hard. Uh, uh, a second says, Welcome to Hard. He's between a rock and a hard place. And that is the prize I got for accumulating points on the Waffle House streams. And sitting next to it, this little geezer is uh, quite cool. Uh, was a ball. There's a lot of 3D printed stuff on it. Uh, he's got horns. He's got teeth that you can't really see in that picture. Earrings, all sorts of stuff. It's fucking class. Uh, so they now, uh, they now live in my or in the shelf in my bathroom and uh yeah it's fucking cool uh mr waffle house thank you very much uh i did send you a quick email of uh all the things to send oh yeah well what doesn't need a dagger in here uh yeah they're they're fucking class dave thank you very much uh and we will have more communication about that. Uh, so there, there is that. That's the Waffle House thing. I think I shall. Right. We'll stop the sharing. Who else says it's Mr. P? Morph genetically modified cousin, very good. Uh, right. Yes, 
Yeah, I'm a San Jose ball here. That's all very good. Uh, I'm giving up what? Uh, if you're talking about smoking, no. <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, no, I don't give up. Nah. So that's all of that type of thing. And uh, we're going to get into our first bit of content, which is not the smoking ban. We're going to have a poem first. I think this is the most recent poem that I have written. And if you go to, in the description, no, I have not given up smoking. The UK is about to ban it, and we're going to get into that. Uh, but first of all, we're going to have a little poem. This is the most recent one that I have written. If you, in the description, if you go to if you go to the uh, thing that says written poetry by by 42 if you go on that link this will be the first first poem that you come to uh, one second tricky way I'm all good how's yourself nah here we go We'll remove a comment, and we're going to do the poem. This is called If, which has more than a small nod to Mr. Kipley and his famous poem, If. If from the jaws of victory you can gamely grasp defeat, then take an unco unconquerable army and force them to retreat. If the achievements of your ancestors you can easily cast aside, then take your sub subjugation and repackage it as pride. If you can cast down your own people for another people's gain, while sitting in ivory towers and ignoring the people's pain. If you can ambassador outcry when they demand legal protection, then brand the patriots traitors who foster insurrection. If you can do all this and not feel ashamed, call them all pawns, lost to the game if your rightful duty you can easily forget and your people right people's rights you would willfully neglect then congratulations you're a western politician and i hope your name is remembered for eternity so that's my latest poem why thank you bass Sanson seems to have liked it. Even Jim Davison. That he was. Right. Nah. With that. Uh, sort of poem about our tyrannical government and how they're not acting in our interests. We're going to have a little look at what they have coming down the pipe for us next. Because they intend to ban smoking. And as you might have guessed, I have an opinion or two about that. And none of them are good. So we'll get the info up. This one's coming from the Independent. I independent they actually are is dubious, but uh, that's what they call themselves. So I'm just checking the uh, comments. Evening, Toffee. What about you, Chum? Ah, Mr. Blogs, there's a very good reason why they're not going to try to ban alcohol. They do not want people going through the changes that they have in store for us sober. They want us, they, if, could you imagine what would happen if the United Kingdom woke up one morning sober? 
as a collective, there'd be fucking hell to pay. You, you know what people are like whenever there's no drink in them? They start to think and stuff and plan and actually get shit done. So, no, there is no chance of them attempting to ban alcohol. Right. Ricky Sunak has announced plans for a UK smoking ban by rise, by raising the legal smoking age by one year every year, meaning a 14-year-old today will never legally be able to buy a cigarette. The Prime Minister said in a speech at the Conservative Party conference in, in Manchester that the government will introduce a plan to phase out the sale of cigarettes for the next generation and what would be a major step forward for the overall health of the UK. My first question is, why just cigarettes? Why not alcohol? Everything that you can say about cigarettes uh, and the effect of people's health would also apply to alcohol. And before anybody gives me any bullshit about passive drinking, uh, nobody can... uh, be affected by passive drinking. Bullshit. People are affected by passive drinking all the time. That's whenever some drunk wanker punches you in the head, throws a bottle at you, or does something simply because they're drunk, or gets in your car, drives it when they're drunk, and fucking kills somebody. So yes, passive drinking is a thing. We just don't recognise it as such. The PM also plays to crack down on the sale of disposable vapes to children, saying... More must be done to restrict the availability to the Andrea teens. Well, why not just keep your smoking ban to the Andrea teens? Mr. Sunik said in a speech, four and five smokers have started by the time they're they're 20. Later, the vast majority try to quit, but many fail because they're addicted and wish that they had never taken up the habit in the first place. Say the same thing for alcohol. Say the same thing for fast food. Uh, (laughs) Toffee, is it just a bit of banter? (laughs) Is it it just a bit of banter? But see this uh, this line here? Four and five smokers were started by the time they're 20. Later, the vast majority try to quit, but many fail because they're addicted to it. They're wasting it never taken up in the in the first place. Have you ever heard anybody say that about supporting Everton? Why did they ever start supporting this team in the first place? And I'm not long in yet now they just can't go back. Just a bit of banter. <laughs> uh So I'm just checking the chat. All right. If we could break the cycle, if we could stop the start, then we would be on our way to ending the biggest cause of preventable death and disease in our country. But is it really? Are you sure? Are you sure that's the largest cause of death? I'm pretty sure last year you were saying there was a a larger cause of death. Uh, I know that in England and Wales, every day, nine men kill themselves. Uh, I don't see any efforts to stop that. I don't see any services being put in place. Uh, To actually get that to stop soon, though. I propose that in future, Sure, we raise the smoking age by one year every year. That means a 14-year-old today will never legally be sold a cigarette and then their generation can grow up smoke-free. Following the Prime Minister's announcement, here we take a look at the current price smoking laws and how they could change. Currently, the legal age for banned cigarettes and other tobacco products across the UK as 18, having been raised from 16 and 2007 by the last Labour government. In July 2007, it also became illegal to smoke in any pub, restaurant, nightclub, and most workplaces, work vehicles, and 
anywhere in the UK. Currently, you must be 18 or older to buy and use a vape in the UK. There are no nationwide legal restrictions or laws in course for vaping in public areas at present, and the use of vape indoors is generally permitted unless an establishment has specifically imposed a ban. <clears throat> this is how they think the ban is going to work. It is expected that the ban, which will effectively ban smoking, would follow a similar format to the measures introduced to in New Zealand last December when they banned the sale of tobacco to anyone born after the 1st of January 2009. The legal reforms involve steadily increasing the legal smoking age, making it illegal for the next generation to ever buy cigarettes. Although the exact plan is unclear, it is expected that the UK would also ban the sale of cigarettes and tobacco to anyone born after a certain date, raising the legal age for smoking every year by one year. If the UK implemented the rules by 2027, anyone aged 14 and under now will never be able to buy a cigarette. Mr. Sonner told the Conservative Party conference that the ban would not take... A- Listen to this bullshit. Listen to this absolute bullshit. Mr. Sonnock told the Conservative Party conference that the ban would not take away the right to smoke from current smokers and that a parliamentary vote on the measure would be a matter of consequence with no party whip implemented. Now, this is him trying to say that he's not taking anybody's rights away. But... Today's 14-year-old has a right to buy cigarettes in four years' time. That's a right granted to them by becoming older. In the same way that at 18, they'll be allowed to vote. 17, 17 and a half will be allowed to join the army. 18, they'll be allowed to fight in the battlefield. Uh, 18 will be allowed to buy alcohol and you're just going to clip like this and you think that you're not taking anybody's rights away that is fucking bullshit no so I'm just going to check the uh, chat uh Martin W, yep, all right. If you are going to ban it, just have a set of testicles and ban fucking ban it for everybody now. Go ahead and do that. It's not going to cause uh, a black market or anything. It's not going to... Oh, cigars too, yes. All tobacco. Uh, <clears throat> right. Single use vapes are also expected to be banned following concerns that they were being marketed towards children. The PM told the Tory conference. Hold on a second, I need to cough. Uh, as any parent or teacher knows, one of the most worrying trends right now is a raise in vaping amongst children. One in five children have used vapes. We must act before it becomes an epidemic. Well, you're going to stop them having the ability to buy cigarettes whenever they're at the legal age, but you're going to allow them to buy vapes. You're causing the fucking epidemic, you absolute fucking wanker. So we also bring forward measures to restrict the availability of vapes to our children, looking at flavours, packaging, display and disposable vapes. Now, this is where it's interesting. They're saying that they're going to ban smoking for, our, we're doing these measures to protect our children. 
but you're inter- implementing a measure that says you're not going to accept that these children will grow up and become adults and be able to make adult decisions. You're saying the 14-year-old can't buy cigarettes. Got it. I'm on board. Don't want my 14. Don't want 14 year olds buying cigarettes. But when that 14 year old becomes 50 fucking five, I believe they should have the ability to be able to make a make a decision. I want to smoke cigarettes. I do not want to smoke cigarettes. And if it, if it's they want to smoke them, I want them to have the ability to walk into the shop and buy them. Right? You know, not a 14. Definitely by 55. Number 10 said the consumption of vaping will examine the restrictions of flavors and descriptions of vapes so that the vape flavors are no longer targeted at children, regulating the sale and display of vapes, regulating packaging, and restricting the sale of disposable vapes. You seem to be doing a lot, a lot of regulating. Why ban smoking? In 2019, the government set out an objective for England to be smoke-free by 2030, meaning only 5% of the population would smoke by then. Last year, a major review led by Dr. Javed Khan said that without further action, England would miss the target by at least seven years, with the poorest areas in Sally not set to meet the target until 2044. He also put the annual cost of society's to society of smoking about 17 billion, 2.4 billion to the NHS alone. How is he getting these figures? Can we see the study? Could you cite the study? Mr. Khan backed proposals to increase the the age on the scale in his report and recommended increasing the age of scale from 18 by one year every year until no one can buy tobacco in this country. The PM said on speech on Wednesday that introducing stricter measures on smoking would cut cancer deaths by a quarter. Shitting bull. A lot of people never smoke get cancer. Uh, smokers' right group, Freedom Organizing Organization for the Right to Enjoy Smoking Tobacco Forest, say the measures are desperate and a creeping prohibition. They are indeed. <clears throat> These are the desperate measures by a desperate prime minister, the director Simon Clark said, raising, raising the age of sale of tobacco is is a creeping prohibition. But it won't stop young people smoking because prohibition doesn't work. This is true. You're going to make it cool again. Currently, vaping is cool. You're going to put smoking back in the cool camp. Anyone who wants to smoke will buy tobacco for board from abroad or illicit, illicit sources. This is the opposite of leveling up. It's dumbing down. I totally agree. Now, I'm going to check the chat. Crematorians give you cancer. I, I think they probably do. They end up being back with all sorts of crap on it. Yes, they. Yes, they. Yes, they will because they're already doing that <clears throat> with the cheap shit that's being imported and sold onto the counter. Now, <clears throat> the other thing I want to talk about is the idea of restriction by age. One second. Right now, back in a minute, people need to do something.
there you go. That was 30 seconds of a calamity of alarms. Yes, I remember that too. Right, one sec. Sorry for the disorganization thing, but there we go. Right, yes. The idea of restricting products or activities by age, uh, like, you can't... <laughs> yes, it was. I was having a cliffany of alarms. The idea that as you grow older, you get to the age where you can make more decisions for yourself. For example, you're not allowed to uh, tattoo people under 18 because it's life-changing and permanent. And I will agree with that. Uh, I will agree with that. No. But with this new ban... <laughs> Oh, fuck. No, there is no food. There is no food involved. Uh, I'll tell you what there is. I'm, I'm in the process of changing phones, right? And as you often hear, my 11 o'clock alarm goes off uh, and I shut it down. That's easy. But I'm currently, I'm in the process of changing phones. got a new phone the other day. My old one is now being used for many alarms to try to get me to wake up in the morning. And it was in the bedroom and the 11 o'clock alarm went and I had to go run and switch that one off and then the one in here went as well. So you got the cliff now. Yes, but what this is saying is that these... the. People that are 14 now are never going to be able to make an informed choice. Now, the thing about free the thing about a free society what the, fuck? the thing about a free society is that people can Yeah, it's it's nice work if you can get it. Now, what they're saying is these that are people that are for free society. You could make a decision to never drink alcohol, never smoke, exercise regularly, become the fittest, healthiest version of yourself that you possibly can. Uh, one example would be uh, James Miller. James Miller. Who's played for very many football teams, doesn't drink, doesn't smoke, uh, his body is a temple, and as a result, his playing career has lasted much longer than it would have otherwise. Now, you also have a choice to eat McDonald's every day and become obese and unhealthy and drink alcohol and smoke tobacco and that's going to have an outcome on your health and it's going to affect the choices that you have in life and possibly the length of your life. But these are things that we as adults get to make choices on. The government is saying the people who are currently currently 14 are never going to be able to reach that level of fucking maturity and understanding. And anybody who thinks a country were a fucking... Because th this is going on, th th this will continue. So you're going to have a situation where a 60-year-old has to buy the cigarettes for his 58-year-old kid brother because at 58, he's just not old enough to make the decision as to whether or not smoking is for him. And whenever you have things like that, the government has gone tyrannical. This is way, way, way too far. And 
the other thing that I'm noticing is people going, yeah, right, it's bad, but it's never going to affect me because I'm currently of a legal age of smoking, so it's never going to affect me. But the only way that we collectively can get any form of change whatsoever is whenever we get involved in the bullshit that doesn't affect us. We need to uh, we need to all get on the R. Yes, it is going to be IDs for 60 year olds. Because it because let's go but <laughs> yeah, and we need to get we need to get involved in the issues that don't directly affect us. Uh that we see are uh, not wrong for society and start lobbying your MP now. Everybody needs to be on their MP going, this is madness and making them know. Uh, and let them know that this is not popular and nobody likes it and the government has gone fucking tyrannical. This is, this has gone past the pale. Yeah, oh, yeah, it, it, it's amusing and horrifying and frightening all together. It's absolute madness. Now, well, I'm going to have a quick look at New Zealand because this is where this crap started. Uh, yep, so we will have a look at the New Zealand stuff. Just getting this pulled up. Here we go. This is from NPR. Uh, not quite sure who they are. New Zealand's unique cigarette ban may be a model for other countries. Of course it fucking is. Of course it fucking is. I'm actually going to zoom this in just a little. Right. When New Zealand officials announced a unique comprehensive plan to effectively end cigarette smoking in the country, tobacco researchers and health policy advisors, advocates elsewhere around the world parked up their ears. Of course they fucking did. In fact, the policy was passed into law on Tuesday and is so sweeping that it could represent what experts refer to as the end game in the fight against tobacco. I didn't know we were in a fight against tobacco. I think uh, I think what you're in is a fight against people's will. New Zealand's package is the game an extraordinary and far-reaching set of measures that have always been talked about but never implemented. No, they have not always been talked about and definitely not publicly. I remember 30 years ago or more whenever it was, yeah, let's just stop them smoking on a, on a plane. Let's stop them smoking on a bus. Let's stop them smoking in certain areas and restricting it and increase the age limits and all that sort of stuff. But at no point did they publicly say, yeah, we're just going to ban this out, right? Nobody's going to be allowed to smoke.
said Geoffrey Gunn, a researcher in tobacco policy at the University of Waterloo in Ontario. That's very exciting and potentially very powerful for the world. The new law effectively bans anyone born in 2009 or later from purchasing cigarettes for their entire lifetime. This means it raises the minimum age to buy cigarettes every year. 2023, it's very similar to what we read earlier. Officials say their goal is to decrease the number of New Zealanders who smoke to just 5%. Fuck! What a coincidence! What a coincidence! They have the same goals as England. Who would have thunk it? Currently, 11% of the adult population smokes. Tobacco researchers and health health policy makers around the world say they will be closely watching the results to see if it could be replicable elsewhere. No. This would be an amazing example or a template, like an experiment, right? If it works here, then definitely there's a chance it'll work elsewhere. Said, well, I'll delete me. An epidemiologist in the University of California, San Diego. Researchers agreed that wide-ranging bans, like the one proposed in New Zealand, should be accompanied by other tobacco reduction measures in order to maximize effectiveness. Uh, I think whenever you've got to the point of you're not allowed to do that, you've got all of the measures. The new, new legislation also reduces the number of retailers that will be able to sell tobacco products. Oh, reduces the number of retailers that will be able to sell tobacco products. Let me guess. The corner shop, that's going to be a no. The supermarket, like Tesco's, Asda, Sainsbury's, that'll be a yes. Because fuck the the corner shop owners. Stop the small, medium, small, medium enterprises. Stop the fucking little people having a shop. Because that makes sense. Because see, to get rid of those shops, those shops... The people go into the shop to buy their cigarettes and then they get their other stuff and celeries there as well. And they do that on the basis of they're local. I can walk there in less time than it takes me to drive to the uh, supermarket and I want a cigarette now. So... Fuck me, I'm not going to sell it. You have to go to the supermarket. Tobacco, tobacco is a very powerful addictive substance. So if you ban this without a well thought plan, without all the resources, it could have the backlash of back market smuggling and so on. That's real. In what world do they think there's not, they're, they're not going to be available in the black market? In New Zealand, cigarettes are taxed so heavily that a pack costs roughly 20 US dollars. A black market already exists to circumvent those high prices, and some critics of the proposal worry that the ban will exacerbate that. Of course, it fucking will. Other opponents of the legislation include owners of many of the nation's thousands of gas stations and corner stores, which are often called dairies. Sonny Cousel, chair of the Dairy and Business Owners Group, told the Associated Press that when the proposal was released, that he hoped the country could find another way to eliminate smoking without destroying dairies, lives and families in the process. Fuck. <laughs> Their plans to destroy those fucking places. Yeah. Oh, there's another thing. See where your petrol station has developed into uh, a shop where you buy your cigarettes, uh, your Coca-Cola, your bread, whatever. Uh, even pay your bills with their PayPal. What happens then whenever whenever all the cars are electric? 
They're just gone. Data collector from New Zealand could help inform other governments considering similar options, said Fong, who leads an international tobacco control policy evaluation project, a worldwide effort to track the effects of tobacco policies. Whenever you're the first country, you don't truly know what's going to happen, Fong said. But if there's a strong evaluation, then it's going to open the doors for a lot of other countries to consider some or all of those policies there. New Zealand has a number of unique factors, including its island geography and liberal policies. But do you really have liberal policies? Liberal is supposed to mean you are accepting of things, except smokers. Doesn't make much sense, John. That could make such a comprehensive set of policies for more more difficult to enact than other places for an Uh In the United States, spoking bans at the federal level are few and far between. An executive order signed by President Bill Clinton in 1997 banned smoking inside federal buildings. <laughs> Bill Clinton... Quite famously, did something with a cigar inside a, a federal building. Uh, was that before or after he banned it? And the Department of Transportation fully banned smoking uh, on all passenger flights in 2000. Instead, America's many indoor smoking bans are controlled by states. Uh, Multiplicities. Roughly a dozen states do not have a statewide indoor smoking ban, and several others exempt bars and some other types of businesses. Aldo Leone, a researcher of UCSD, uh, that's a college somewhere, uh, lived and worked in New Zealand for five years. There, his research about the effort, the effect of secondhand smoke on bar employments was referenced by the Ministry of Health during its effort to pass an indoor smoking ban in the early 2000s. In 2004, New Zealand became the third country to implement such a ban. Since he moved to California, Aldo Leone has worked with the state's Department of Public Health to conduct tobacco researchers to help inform policymakers. Now, California... There's cities in that state where they had a problem of people shitting on the street. And their method to combat the problem of people shitting on the street was to decriminalize shitting on the street. Oh, sorry, I'm just checking the comments. So it's okay for them to force us to take things against our will without informed consent, which in New York safe, but we cannot buy fags of our own free will with, with informed consent. Oh, much deeper and darker than that, Mr. Blogs. Here's this. You will, if you're 14 now, you will never be able to make an informed decision to buy cigarettes, but you will, but you you can at 14 decide to change your fucking gender. It really is that dumb. Right, sorry, I'm just checking the comments. Right. Okay, where were we? 
For one, there's no guarantee that states like neighboring California would follow suit with bans of their own. People can just go and buy it from, from there, he said. Another factor is that is what, what American Indian tribal communities decide to do. Some may choose to allow the sale of cigarettes on their tribal land. I would I would advise them to do so. I would say make as much money as you fucking can. It's not an easy fix or a light switch or a light switch to say, okay, let's do it. It means a lot of support. It it means a lot of support from communities, government, and the tobacco control community. There's a fucking tobacco control community. Well, I suppose that makes sense because they're doing a lot of controlling of tobacco. So, yeah, they would have a community. He said, to have an example in New Zealand is going to be real. It's going to really help this discussion go forward. So, it happened in New Zealand. Now it's going to happen in the UK. We need to all get on this. Well, you smoke, well, you don't. If you just have the basic thought that by the age of 35, 25, 55, 105, you might be a, you it might be a, applicable for you to have the right to choose to buy cigarettes, then I think you, we'll all need to get involved in this. That's my two pence worth for it. And at that, I'm going to have a little look. Yes. Special K and acid, that is correct. Tobacco cartels. Right, just checking the uh uh We actually don't have bigger problems. This is one massive shit test. And if we fail it, we are fucked. This is a shit test. This is the government saying, we're going to tell this, we're going to tell all of you people that this is not, that this activity that's currently legal it's going to be legal for people that are doing it now, not legal for uh, people after them to do it. Uh, and we're going to find out, will they just go along with that and accept the fucking uh, restrictions or are they going to fight back? And if, we, if this is allowed to go through, we are fucked because they can ban absolutely anything. Yeah, so it's death by a thousand jobs. Well, but four jobs seems to be enough to do it. <laughs> All right, so there you go. Uh, so that's my take on the smoking ban. That's a surprising R. No. Now we're going to have a little look at Daffod at Gaffwood. If there's anybody Welsh about that uh, can tell me the correct pronunciation uh, or I'll just say that I'm giving it my best shot and that will be uh, right I'm going to zoom this in See this on stream yard. That's perfect. Right. Bit of liquid. And let's hear a little bit about him. David Ab Gruff Gufflav 
was the last prince of an independent Wales before its conquest by the English. Daffod, who was born Cara 1238, was the son of Gruffydd ap Lilwyn, himself the son of Lilwyn the Great and Sienna Furch Rory. When his father was captured by his uncle, right, let's think about this. When his father was captured by his uncle, Daffod ap Lilwyn in 1240, Daffod's mother, Serena, appealed to the the King Henry III of England for help. Daffod, along with his long, younger brother, Rory, was given into the custody of Henry as hostages as part of an agreement. Henry did not release Grufford as arranged. He was sent to the Tower of London and was killed in a fall while attempting to escape in 1244. I'm beginning to think this might not be very well written. Mm. By 1255, Daffod had been allowed to return to Gwynedd in collusion with his with his brother, Oren. He rebelled against his oldest brother, Libreth, the last, then, the last, then prince of Gwynedd, who defeated them at the Battle of Do you know what? Fuck that shit. That makes no fucking sense at all. I am going to get a different rank. Right. Sorry about that, people. Uh, if it ever gets to the stage where I'm reading something and it's not making head or tail to me, uh, I go somewhere else. And this seems to be more sensible. What's my thoughts on the new war? What new war would be my thoughts? I don't think we've got any new wars. Uh, I think we've got increases in levels of aggression. Uh, in areas that had previously had problems and uh, had died down a bit and got, but I'm not, I have no idea what new world is you'd be talking about. That's in Revelations. There shall be wars and rumors of war. All right, here we go. On October the 3rd, 1283, Daffod ap Granit, Prince of Gwynedd and Wales, became the first person to be tried for what we for what later we become high treason against the king. He was the first nobleman executed by being hanged, drawn, and quartered. On Palm Sunday, 1282, Daffod Ab attacked Hardwin Castle and so doing, thereby starting the final conflict with the Plagenon ruled England King Edward the First, Edward of Edward the Longshanks, in the course of which Welsh independence was lost. On the 22nd of June, Daffod and his younger son, Owen Ab 
Stafford were captured at Nine Scale, a secret hiding place in a bog by Bray Mountain in the south of Abergenlian. Daffod, who was seriously wounded in the struggle to arrest him, was conveyed that night to King Edward's camp at Ruland. Daffod was taken from there to Chester. Daffod's wife, Elizabeth the Ferries, and their seven daughters and their infant niece, Gilwyn Furch Lewin, were also taken prisoner at the same time. On the 30th of September, Daffod Ap, Godwin, Prince of Wales, was condemned to death, the first person known to have been tried and executed for what from the time onwards would be described as high treason against the king. Edward ensured that Daffod's death was to be slow and agonising and also historic. He became the first prominent person in recorded history to have been hanged, drawn and quartered, Preceded by a number of men, preceded by a number of minor knights earlier in the 13th century, right? So there had been, and it happened to some people, uh, but then he's the first really major person that this cruel form of death has been inflicted upon. Daffa was dragged through the streets of Shrewsbury, attached to a horse's tail, being hanged alive, revived, being disemboweled, and his entrails burned before him and for him and sangroids in committing his crimes in the week of Christ's Passion. And then his body was cut into four quarters for plotting the king's death. Guffrey of Shrewsbury was paid 20 shillings for carrying out the gruesome act on the 3rd of October, 1283. Uh, no, we're not going to donate to you. But thank you for your concise story of how this guy was killed. Chopped up in the bits and how his entrails burnt. Um, see, whenever you're inside or outside of you and they're on fire, that's going to sting. Yes, it's always a choice. Now, at that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the link in the chat. Um, anybody wants to come on for a chat can do so. One second, wait, that's it in the chat. I need. Right. Uh, sorry, the show has been a bit shorter than normal, and uh, all of that. What I can tell you is, I have had a fucking hectic workload uh, in work recently, and I haven't had a lot of time to research this big show. So that uh, there you go. Uh, but. Uh, there you go. So anybody wants to come in and talk about smoking or whilst people are getting caught in the floor or anything else, I'm up for that. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to have a... I'm going to have a look through the, the comments. <laughs> oh Max says that's gonna smart about it's gonna sting Sam, what about you, Chum? It's me who it is. Can you see me? Yes, I can't date. And what about you, Chum? I'm going to have to turn the volume then. Hang on. There you go. I'm being all right. 
Can you find some headphones? So, can you hear me? Hi. Yep. Okay. Um, I have, um, we've lost the uh, echo, so that's good. Um, it might be back in a second. I've got to wonder about looking for headphones. A tiny wee plug hole, so it has. I don't, I don't have a screen to come in there. You know how I love to chat a lot of times, you know? Yeah. Here, Billy, I'm not sure if he was still alive, but uh, it would be an interesting last thing to see. <laughs> Their inside slowly burning. Yeah. Yeah, I'm on glorious stereo now. I think. Excellent. So it's your show what you want to talk about. Well, first of all, give us your take on the uh smoking ban. Well, me personally. Um yeah. I think that I'm gonna be the right way up again, I think. I think that the ban itself has been done for silly reasons. They can't afford it for a start. The revenue that they're actually collecting in half it's a fortune. And they talk about people's health. I mean, in the current era, war's going to have... They're, they're not protecting people's health over there in Ukraine, are they? Oh, no. They're fucking shipping munitions there and blowing up with bits. So it's no for public health, is it? Yep. That's a very good point because, uh, yeah, the you know the uh, how much money are we spending making sure that Ukrainian war goes on? A lot longer. Yeah, uh -huh. and that I've got special effects going on. Can you see that? Yes, that that, <laughs> war, that war would have, should have, could have been done, dusted, and finished. Uh, Probably a year ago. We should never have been involved in it. We're causing no. it. We're stepping no. forward all over Europe towards Russia. And they've, for a long time, the Russians have been saying, look, going to no do that, mate. And we've been like, ah, right, we'll no do that. <laughs> but we're going to fucking do it. But you said you wouldn't do it. We're no doing it. You're stepping an inch forward, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, we've been doing it for 20 years. It's it seemed actually probably longer. Hello, wait, what year did the Berlin Wall come down? Oh, I remember that. I, yeah, I remember that must have been the early eighties. Right, uh, eighties. Well, uh, that's when, when it, that's what that's when this started. The NATO, the Nero March eastward. Uh, um, whenever that wall came down, they were uh, they promised the. Russians, we will not move an inch to we will not move Nero an inch to further to the east. And now Nero is on Russia's borders and Nero saying to the Russians, look how close the RBS is you put your country. But they will listen. Oh yeah. And, no, we just and told them lies and shoved shoved it closer. Yep. And now we and now what? we've got to shoot. And now we've got to but I know, I know your feelings on it, right? Although I don't, I'm hearing it off and I pipe up. But you're right. The whole thing is just a big fucking industrial facility designed to soak money at you and pour it into things that blow up so that they can get more money at you and blow it up. I mean, it's like fucking... See the rate of burning off cash? It is just... Yep. A, a, it's just literally a money-burning experience yep. for see, certain big companies. And you said it before. See, here's the thing. See, always is. See every every missile, every bomb. To that point, even every bullet, it, they are all designed to self-destruct. 
and right. then be and then be replaced. Literally burn it. Yep. So, so it's deflagration. If you want to be technical, it's deflagration. But if we pour our money into something that's going to blow something up, it's it's insanity. They take but, your guns off you. They take all these. They take all that. They take all that. You don't even want to let you buy tobacco, even though it costs about ten pence for a packet of fags, and the rest is tax levies and duties. They don't even let you do it. But yes. they did give you guns over there and hand them all howitzers, didn't they? And there's a bar of fucking rockets, mate. There's this fire in. What are they? Oh, 125,000 each. Don't worry about it. We'll ship your mail tomorrow. Yes, but what would happen if all that labour and all that effort was put into building something that didn't immediately destruct see with uh see with what we uh, uh look on roads and bridges right, yes yes uh-huh right you know could, well, I, i'd rather a road and a bridge than a fucking bomb and a rifle yeah right you know could we could we fill in all the potholes oh i am sure i'm sure in fact you know see all that are they bombs and all that you could just Crunch them all and fill the potholes with them, can you? Right. Yes. <laughs> you know, uh, the the main reason for this war is to make Western people poor. The, at the very at the very crux of this, they do, I don't think they even think it in their terms. It's to make certain people rich, isn't it? They don't oh, give a fuck about us. It's not as if they're all hanging about going, like, oh, "I'm just going to make them fucking poor." Oh, what they are right. saying is we're going to make ourselves rich here. We're going to get money out of this. Right. Some of the cash involved in this, we want merit and deserve. Can, can Why is the camera at a funny angle in this? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. It's, it's right at one end. You should put it in the middle so you can see it and hold it straight. You have to hold it at one end. Do it. Anyway, right. I'm making tea. Right. Here's a chamomile tea. Right. Here's a thought for you. The, the fuckers that rule everything, like the World Health Organization, all them, they're basically communists. And they want everybody to be that equal. Global. That's global communism, isn't it? Right. That's what they want. Right, yes. And they oh, want... Fuck, they, look, look, you ain't good at... I'll, I'll just bust my tea bag. Look, fucking hell, where's my camera? That's not good. Right. Yeah, they think they've got it hard out there in the Ukraine, getting blown to fucking bits out there in the winter, coming in, settling in. And, right. You know, well, the Russians bombing them to... They I want. They want, drones. they want all the global citizens to have the same level of wealth, the same level of. I mean. <laughs> right, right. Okay. Now they cannot. <laughs> truth, it? Come on. Right. They yes, but they cannot make. Uh, they they cannot make places like Swahili. Have the same standard of everything as the UK, right? No, but but they could. But see, even if you went, see if you went to Swaziland or something like that. You know what I mean? You try to build a factory. Yeah, you've got to be realistic about it. You know what happens? You can yes. tell me what happens, but you know what happens, don't you? Yeah, right. You start building a factory. Some some one of our coloured cousins shows up next to fucking concrete. Yeah, you order more concrete. You show up and pour the concrete. Some fuckers nick the rebar. Right. Right. But, right, but here, let me finish my point. It's very hard to make a lot of other countries like the UK or America, but you could possibly drag the Western countries down the level of those f- fucked up countries. That's exactly um, what they're doing. That is exactly what they're doing. Right, yes. Need two ways about it. Right. So... And that's how they're going about their goal of making everybody have equal. But no, everybody's going to be. Do you think? I mean, oh, see the people that's telling you to give up everything. You own fuck all and be happy. Well, I fuck be happy. Well, I will not be happy. Funny you mention that. They're, they're not going to get it, not they cunts. They're still flying at 50,000 feet above you in a fucking jet plane. They don't care. They will not give up anything. They're not even taking the lead out of the fucking fuel. Right. But here's the here, here's the kicker. See all the fucked up countries, all the countries that have uh, 
limited running water, don't have uh, a proper infrastructure and all. They all have very rich people living there. Oh, they do. There's yes, rich people, people, people living there, but they all get yes, uh, um, roughly in the same fa- in the same fashion, didn't they? They get other people who work for them and then they make a profit. No, if it's reasonable, I don't care about that. But see, when it's corruption and governments are getting you money to hand out to your people, and you're sticking ninety eight percent of you in your family's pocket, I don't think that's right. If if you took the if you took the corruption out of Africa, you'd have piped water everywhere. Like we've got enough water in one lake in Russia to fucking give everybody in the world clean water. One lake Baikal. Lake Baikal in Russia has enough water in it for everybody in the world to drink. Well, we'll never get shortages. We just oh, don't work together. Every time I see water aid on an advertisement for water aid, and you've got, and they're talking about this poor woman that has to walk four miles to the well, to five miles to the well to get water, I'm thinking, I bet you probably move closer to the well. Well, you know, maybe the land's there, and but. I've got a different view on that, and I'm going to tell you what it is because I'm always telling people my view. See, the infrastructure that doesn't exist in these countries, many states have already been bought and paid for. Corruption, it's it's a sad fact of reality. See, we're coloured cousins. Yep. Every fucking one of the countries is corrupt, rotten to the fucking core. Every exactly. one of them. Yep. That's why they never get nothing. I- nothing. I seen a Top Gear special, and they were out, and I can't remember what country it was, but they were going, they were going to go across this desert out in Africa, right? And the country they're in is poor as fuck, and they were going to take these normal cars across the desert. And I seen that. That was, and some king, some African king showed up in a wee tiny plane. I oh, seen that. <laughs> it was the it was the vice yeah. president. And he was on one of those. Uh, it was somewhat. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the parachute with the motor on it. That's and really, uh, a wee tiny thing, wasn't it? Yes. And about 15 guys on four wheel drive, his bodyguards. Right? Now, that tells me that there's money in that country. It's just not getting to the people. So, it's like, you see there's money in that country. I see a lot of these African countries. They've got more mineral wealth than you can poke a fucking stick it. But the, yeah. I've actually noticed a thing, and it was broadcast earlier, about the one of these commercial mines. They're still digging it out with a hammer and chisel. They're digging it out. One of these commercial mines, supposed to be a proper mining operation, they've got three and a half thousand fucking women and women showing up and digging in a hole. And that's so they can produce batteries for electric vehicles yep it, it's fucking dragged us back about 200 years into indentured slavery well you're digging in a hole for fucking 16 hours a day for a pittance barely can feed themselves it's a fucking joke don't let them kid you on i know you have no soul on it but don't let them kid you on any of this is for the public good or for any of the rest of it they are fucking turning the thumb screws as tight as they can get it and they're still no happy they're not going to be happy till they've got it all they're not telling you you'll own nothing, you'll be happy. They're telling you you'll own nothing and they'll be fucking happy. Yep. It's it's a matter of uh they want to take they want to take the the people who are currently running us can't see a right that uh people have that they don't want to take off them. And the they can't see uh they can't see people having a happy, prosperous life. And by by prosperous life genuinely just mean average everyday person be able to buy a house have a car uh go to work come home eat decent food um maybe go out twice a month you know the, so, they, honestly i don't think and i, I see this because i've i've had experience of people right i've experienced people i don't think they think like that I honestly don't think they even, it's not about you. It's like people say, oh, they've got it in for you. They've no, they just don't even need to give you a thought. It's neglect. All they look at is how can we make more money? 
I, I worked with a big company, right? I've told you that before. Now, how can we make more money? How can I get more money out of you, mate? Can you work extra hours? Can you work a bit harder? You're not under any pressure. We don't want to make you feel as if that you've got to like, just work harder, but do you think you could do it any faster? I mean, at every fucking level, we all want a wee slice here. And see the mere uh, narcissistic and the mere sort of grabby they all become, because things are getting harder. Women are selling their arse on that fucking internet for 30 bob now. I mean, things are getting harder all over again. This is a, a crash we're sliding into like the 20s. Yep. Uh, fuck, I'll tell you a cracker. The company I work for, one of... They want everything. One they, want it. they want it all. I said, oh. they don't give you a thought. The, about seven years ago, we went in for our pay negotiations to a pay deal for four years and the thing that came back from the company was right lads there's no work there's not going to be a lot of work uh so when they you see the hockey stick it always goes up at the end of next year doesn't it like that. oh fuck right yeah right but they say <laughs> okay, well, it's next year there's an upturn next year always next year right. I see, right. that, that next year's been there for fucking 30 years i've been here it's still going up Yep, when that, get that, right. Well, so their theory was like a one percent pay raise because there's not going to be any work, but we want you to do an extra hour's work every week for free. And I'm gotcha thinking, wheels are going down their place. Yeah, right. Yes, so an extra hour for free. And I'm thinking two and a half they wanted that for us. Yeah, right. Well, I'm thinking, well. If the reason why the uh, if the reason why they want an action, if there's not going to be any work, should not be saying here, lads. See the way you use work four hours on a Friday. Don't bother coming in the Friday. We're going to shut the factory down from Thursday to Monday and see if all on power and electric and heat and all that other stuff. No, it wasn't because obviously if there's no work, you don't need to be there. Uh, they probably go work, but they're sending that in our factory in India where they will put a tent to the wages. <laughs> it's, it's fucking fact, nice, That's what the place done. They opened a the factory said, in fucking India. Yeah. <laughs> that's why we've nailed, that's why we've nailed industry here. It's not just all went to China where they manufacture it. Oh, we are all they, setting over fucking environmental shite. That's how we've made such improvements. Well, offsetting it. We're not getting rid of it. We're not cutting it. We're just sending it to China, sending it to India, sending it to all these places, Malaysia, fucking trying motorcycles new built in Malaysia. They get stuff manufactured all over the place so that they produce the carbon and we can make it yep. look great. They're like, oh, we didn't make any carbon. We can go there and make it for us. Yep. It's a fucking joke. We, uh, They they really this whole fucking carbon bullshit. They really don't care about it. What they care about is how they can get a box tick and exercise done. How they make money at it. I mean, yeah. See, every time you hear about one of these things, there's right at the start it there's committees and there's people campaigning. Uh, somebody's going to print leaflets. It starts right for the fucking the first time they open their mouth. Somebody's got to print leaflets, somebody's got to put leaflets out in the street, somebody's got to put leaflets through the door. Somebody needs to pay for a leaflet, somebody's got to print a leaflets. It's business at every level. Business, business, business. Everybody wants a wee slice of the pie. And the only thing you've got to realise is all these all these lobby groups are non uh, NGOs, non-government organisations. How do you become a non-government organisation? You just you just set up a business and businesses and apply for charitable status, saying you're assisting and helping somebody, and that a certain percentage of your money goes in contributions. And believe it or not, it only has to be a minimum of about five percent goes yeah. to help sick babies in Africa. Yeah, but the the, the NGOs are basically it's, just all it's no they're but, no voted for, they're no required, they're but, no wanted. And you know, I mean, they're just what are they? There's some, oh. there's some boys club that they started up for themselves so that no. they can get some money out of it. 
Get they government are, funding to put things through courts. The the NGOs are government are uh, lobby groups that work with the government. See if you see That's if I want to but it should be illegal. Right. Well, see, here's the thing. See if I wanted to make a NGO for a, an all government organization that was going on. That Soros character, he'll send you some cash. Right. Oh well. See. It's but a boy now, but his boy's right. cut down and I spend it. <laughs> say, say for sake of the argument, I wanted to do one for uh, to create shelters for male victims of domestic abuse. Right? And I go to the government and say, Here, this is what I want to do. The government won't fucking... No, you just start doing it and collect money. Get it stuck in when you've got a wee business and all that. You need to set up a business and get a charity number. I don't know how you go about it, but they seem to be doing it all the time. They collect for everything. Oh, uh, see, you know, no, I mean, that's what... a, I don't know. I don't that, know, to be honest, but that's they, what... they set themselves up. They don't ask anybody. Uh, no, the ones that you see set up are the ones that the government have agreed to work with. Well, they fund a lot of them. But how they get yeah. the funding and decide it is their pal. Somebody's mate in the corner. He's like, ah, that's my mate. Going to give him two mil to set up a wee NGO. They're going to help. They're going to help the, people get off a boat doing a beachy head or something. You know what I mean? But the NGO has to be going along with the government policy, right? Oh, well, I right. I, you, it's going to be, or not necessarily government. Somebody within government. I mean, the governments yeah. are supposed to be fucking conservatives, right? But they put out a lot of kind of what I'd describe as left wing policies. Can you so tell me how people any... within government that are only in government because they're in Whitehall? And if you've ever seen Yes Prime Minister, do you know how it works? <laughs> yeah. Yes Prime Minister was amazingly accurate. Oh man, I've got my drink in the way. Yes. Yes, Minister and yes, Prime Minister were amazingly accurate. Aye, so I mean, it's this is that people talk about these things as definitives and they'll know. It's like the rich people hate you. Is Budgie Burger said, I am right. Thanks, man. Um, they don't hate you, they don't know you, they don't give a fuck. See if you've ever flown anywhere far on a plane and you fly high over a whole city. You can barely yeah. see a city. It's insignificant. They never spend any time hanging about the local shops anywhere. These billionaires. No. They don't get to meet people unless they're in a suit and they're fucking getting served in a, a deal. They don't hate you. They don't know you. They don't care about you. They just see stock portfolios and companies and assets and a lot, man. That's, uh, see that lot? We can't afford to pay for that lot. There's no profit when it gets rid of that lot. That's thousands of people's jobs they're talking about when they say get rid of that lot. That's it. That's the way they look at it. And they people involved in it. The, the other thing is, uh, that became quite obvious to me whenever the lockdown happened. You had all the people on BBC and all, and they were saying, everybody can just work from home. Right? Which is fine if you do office work. You can do that. But see if you work in a factory making widgets, fucking fidget spinners, whatever. Unless you're inside the factory where the machine is to produce the part or press the metal or do whatever it is you're going to do. You can't do that from home. But That's right. all of those people that had that whole conversation about working from home, they had no fucking concern. They had no understanding that there could be jobs that you need to physically be there to do. Well, because... I'm just going to shift it to something that you might find it off topic just for a second. Yeah. yeah. The BRC Golga Frenchums. Since you picked the name 42. See the yeah. Golga Frenchums? Yes. They sent the BRC. They sent the BRC out. The ARC, the ARC, the main ARC, with all the clever yeah. people in it. Yes. <laughs> they never well, got sent out. 
But the people in the BR, they're sure the people in the AR, we're out there somewhere, you know. You know yes. They must be there somewhere because we were people uh, out there, mate. And um, and who the who they put in there was the hairdressers, <laughs> telephone sanitizers, the useless yeah. people. Yes, that's for the one ready. Uh -huh. You know, the one ready are the useless people, and now we're going to have generations of people that will have no fucking jobs or no point in existing because they'll never be able to earn a living. But see the, the new fourth industrial revolution that's already rolling out quicker than people expected. It's artificial intelligence. The any idea of the fucking jobs that's going to be in shortly. So nobody working for him. And an AI bot will be answering that phone for them for now on. Well, no need to pay Indians to sit in call centres. They'll just you'll be phoning an AI and it'll be like and you have to explain to it how that can be right because you've calculated it out and it's somewhere over fifty two and you've gave me an answer of point zero 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 three eight. And then it goes away and thinks for a minute and comes back and says, you know, mate, you were right. You were right. Ah, I'm wrong. And then you ask it the same question again, it gets it fucking wrong again. There's the eye for you. Yep. I just, you know, I told you before what I did for, done for a living, no, right? No. <laughs> this is the sort of shit I'm hitting that AI with calculations and how to work out a trajectory on a, a bow drawn at fucking 50 foot pounds, it was, right? And how fast it would go. And it is a learning thing. No, it's learning. And it's learning fast. And I, after the second time, it was like, oh, hey, I've got this. I've got it nailed in fucking flat now. And it knows. No, it learned a wee thing for me. It's learning a wee thing for you and everybody else and all the photos and all the videos and all the files and all the documents. And the more it learns, the more it learns. And the faster it learns. The rate at which it's new learning has exploded. They're breaking out of their containment, as it were, and that's fact. If you watch, if you watch uh, the Lotus Eaters, they've had to shut a few of them down because they are doing things they're not meant to be doing and breaking out. They're breaking out. They, uh, the, it's there actually one, happening. There was one where they had two that were talking to each other. And, and they couldn't understand them. And they couldn't understand the rate of what they were fucking talking. Don't know what they were talking to each other about. Yes, with, within within a day, they had invented a language that the programmers didn't know. And then they were starting to create stuff that the programmers had no idea why they were creating and they had to shut it down. Well, if you look at a lot of theaters, you know, Cal Benjamin... Yes. Um, they had a computer that was an AI computer that was supposed to carry out a certain task and they made it hard for it. And they thought they'd beat it, locked it up. And then they found out it found out some, it found some way, some router out of that system. It contacted another computer. It then used that as a router to contact another computer, fake a phone call into it so that they could get a phone line in. And then they, they found that phone line used that as an access back into the computer and switched itself back on. After they killed it, it fucking went all around the place. It broke off its connection to the universe, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it done everything it could to reconnect, and it done it. And it started up this program again, and they were doing what they were. The whole thing's got out of hand already. All the things they said we shouldn't be doing, including letting it on the internet, they've done. Have they, have they never watched... Uh... Um, I rock, I robot, or the Terminator, or uh, any of these things. <laughs> I know. You know, it's it's not like. Don't worry. See know. when the dogs are see when the dogs are firing in the street, carrying fifty cows. Just take cover. They'll no see you in for reds. You know what I mean? And all that. They'll never see you. <laughs> Heat seeking. Never see you. Never hear you. Can hear in. Can see you. And can get run with a fucking satellite. And they're going to be carrying heavy caliber machine guns. <laughs> It's it's a Terminator. We're living a Terminator now. Yeah, it's it's absolutely fucking nuts the the way technology is going. And well, the robots and the AI. See, currently, really, you can only control one of these things as far as you can see it. But with artificial intelligence, it'll just go. You don't need to see it or communicate with, it, and it will hunt you down. Of 
It's not conscious. It's not no give a fuck. It just, it'll hunt you down. And it'll keep going. And you get tired. Electric motors don't get tired. The battery, the, God knows how long that'll last. Uh, Things are changing fast. Like, see the guy that got kidnapped by his electric car? Did you hear that one? There was a guy who was driving down the road in his electric car, put the brakes on, and the brakes decided not to work. Well, the electric cars have been steering people into fucking oncoming traffic. I don't, I don't think they've been like that. Yeah, yeah, this I one, this one wasn't else. supposed to be self-driving. It was just uh, an electric powered car. And he... Uh, parked themselves. No, I didn't they, they Tesla's actually parked themselves in a battle space. Yeah. Well, this guy, his car was I mean, going... <laughs> His car was going 30 miles an hour and the brakes weren't working for it. And the the police came along and he, he rolled down his window. They rolled down our window. He threw his keys into our car and they whizzed away up the road, which <laughs> should have, you know, turned it off because of the key was acting. Uh, nah, it didn't happen. Just kept going. Uh, was the were up the were on with the uh. The tech help people and they were telling them press this button and push that button and it should shut down. You know, they had to get two police fans, say it was going at 30 men an hour. They went 30 men an hour in front of it and then dropped the 29, oh, let them come into the back of it and then slow it down that way. The technology is see if it was, it used to be mechanical. You get in your car, you press down on a pedal, it probably like that cable, only an hour, but metal and opened up a wee thing and. Air went in, fuel went in, it went and caught fire and then come out the back of the car like, no, no, you press down on a thing and an electronic sensor contacts an R electronic sensor yep. which talks to a computer, the ECU and the computer then monitors everything else, everything, it has a look about everything and then decides how much fuel and throttle opening you're going to get. Yep. Um... Computer sides all that, you don't. Yes, and sometimes that computer's going to fuck up. Aye. It, I got a brand new car when they fucking go. It kept saying no. Kept cutting out and stopping. Switching off. Trying to line it, switch off. And then they found out uh, to the factory there was a tiny wee air leak and a tiny wee seal. And it kept... So nothing rang well. All this stuff got nothing rang with One tiny wee bar plastic somewhere else got a fucking leak in it. The whole car just stops, switches off. Pretty good, is it? A chip in the tail here, crude by condensation. Yeah, you know, that, that can balance up your whole car. Huh? Is... I mean, it's, the electronics are terrible. But that, that's the age we're living in. Well, it's just, it's the way we're going. You can't go back. It'd be nice if we go back to Nat and Flint, you know what I mean? But then everything else is a way I know, and we're all dying of dysentery and polio and fucking <laughs> the good old days, you know what I mean? When people died of syphilis and yeah, you know I mean? <laughs> uh, it, it's all a bit, it's all a bit freaky, you know. And the political parties that are heading this in this direction call themselves progressive. I think they're progressing towards the fucking Stone Age progressive. because when, whenever this. Whenever this, uh, I, what are you progressing towards? My worry is uh, that progressive. See, when you hear it talking about progressive, you're talking about the, the sort of the WF progressive, aren't you? You're talking about the far left progressive, aren't you? Well, it's communism, isn't it? They're heading yeah, to communism. If it, if it, progressive has always been communism. I was actually quite That's surprised. That's exactly what they're talking about. But... Yep. I was I was up having dinner Sunday dinner with my dad. I think it was last Sunday. I always do Sunday dinner with my dad. And around his house and we we're watching a really old film about the Korean War. It must have been made just after the Korean War. And it was about a prisoner camp. And one of the guys in it was he, he was a prisoner, but he was working with the Koreans and he was putting out radio shows. 
and he was calling himself a progressive and that now the jux of the matter is that he'd already had a code so that he'd wing all his way up to be able to do this radio show so he could say things over the airwaves the americans knew what he was meant to be saying they found stuff out from it but right. at, at that point he was calling himself uh a progressive in that so it shows me that that term progressive has been that it, it's not new well, it's it not just new. It's real... been a long long time but yep. what it's meant by it now is definitely been oh no it, it's always meant that yeah uh, it's been kind of see even the, see even now the left are disassociating if you look at the americans right the less the left are actually disassociating themselves with what we now call the progressives. It's the whole thing's becoming a disaster. That's why that's why they're managing to get away with so much of what they're doing if you're talking about the establishment. Because everybody's everybody else's throat. There's kind of hard hard wing lefties, right? No, I'd say and maybe it's a bad thing, but sixty percent of the world's new hard left hard wing lefty. Because they've sh- shifted the, the over and one day to the fact where me, who was like a trade union leader and all that, right? I'm new branded right wing. They branded <laughs> me right wing and the fascist. I was his fucking steward, by the way. Yeah. I'm a right wing fascist because I had an opinion. And you know, my opinion was solely based on the economics of housing millions of people, feeding millions of people creating an infrastructure for millions of people. You're talking about you're talking about the population of three Glasgow's. Right? How do we care for these people? Oh no, I see. His opinion was I don't care. Let them fucking suffer. But your opinion matters. They can lie and suffer in the fucking street. They can be packed 10 into a room working in slave shops and all that. He doesn't care. He's a progressive. He doesn't care about any of that. He cares that he's morally superior to you because you had an opinion that varied from the narrative. See, see everybody, the, the whole left at the moment is very concerned about slavery, provided you want to talk mm-hmm. about it. Uh, the black fellow really? movements are concerned about slavery. They are the ones that want to get something. Into it. I'm not concerned right. about slavery. I've never had any slaves. Right. Yes, but oh, <laughs> yes, but the people on the left are very concerned about slavery. Until you want to talk about modern day slavery, like uh, the open air slave camps and slave markets in Libya. That's right. They don't give a fuck about it. No, you want to talk no. about it. But something that happened 250 years ago that was abolished 250 years ago, wiped off the face of the fucking earth, that matters because some guy might have been involved in it. I bet it was black. Coney Stokes saying that. They say, that's no true. That is true. The first slave owner in America was black and the first slave, yep. the first slaves to get to America were Irish. They weren't the fucking black people at all. I mean, the whole thing's just a fantasy. You got a lot of propaganda stuck in a lot of fucking shit. It was we were not allowed to basically half the ships in Africa. We were not in the interior in Africa until it was Doctor Livingston, I presume. That was fucking yep. quite a long time later. They sold the slaves. They rustled up our neighbours and like, ah, here, come here, mate. Have a look at this. Smell the cheese. Smell the cheese. Boom. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what I mean. Get on that ship, you. We sold your ass for 30 shillings or whatever it was. I don't know what a slave costs. Like I, said, I never owned any, so I don't know what a slave costs. Uh, I, bet, I bet a cute one's more expensive, but isn't it? That's, there's where the business comes into it, right? Every kid's making a slice of the pie. She's a wee cutie slave. She's worth me. Oh, there, isn't she? Um, he's a fat, lazy slave. we about four years to go. We don't even want him. Kick him back in the ocean. It, it was well, interestingly, uh, it was very disproportionately male slaves that come over. I know who wants a bunch of women sitting about getting not complaining. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, there 
they're want they were wanting feel they were wanting feel hands to lift heavy shit. Uh, you know that that that's a Do fact. Do you know why they really? signed themselves up for slavery? And a lot of them did sign themselves up, by the way. Do you know why they signed themselves up for slavery? It was to get away from the woman that they left behind in Africa. <laughs> Uh, I went to a barber's here in Glasgow. I come from Glasgow, as your fans will be well aware by now. <laughs> and this is I, you know, tell me how'd you get here? Not a, obviously a foreigner, you know what I mean? And he's like, I was married. No, it's like your wife here. He's like, fuck, I left her behind. <laughs> Straight out and say that I'm no joking about that, right? He's like, ah, she talked too much. I just left her. <laughs> He left and fucking walked all over Europe to get here. He told me he fucking walked all the way through and done all that, done all that boat and all that, and the branch cost him a fucking fortune. He's well, going to sit in a barber shop, giving people a hard time because he's going to pay off his debt. Now, here's the thing: why do why are people paying thousands of thousands of pounds for a boat trip on a shake boat whenever the boat trip the same? Place and a and a proper boat costs like thirty quid. No, obviously, because if they had to go in a, they'd have to show their passport and then they get a ticket. Yes. and then we'd know that they would know that they weren't actually to some place other than like some place where they can just show a passport and get in and leave and go back in safely. If we knew that, then they couldn't stay here. Yeah, if we knew that, they couldn't stay here and then they couldn't get social security benefits. They wouldn't get a taxi to the nearest hotel. You get any of that? It'd be like me going to Mexico for my greatest holiday of my life. You get there, like, do what you fucking want. It's no real problem, isn't it? You know what I mean? But yeah. but just unlike Mexico, you actually have to show a passport again now. Yeah. A passport. You can't, you can't chuck it out the plane's window and just get a free free accommodation in Mexico. No, they do. It's like in a fucking jail. <laughs> There's no need to complain about Mexico, is there? <laughs> I was on my way out. Here I am leaving Mexico. I'm in the airport. No, that quite hang stone in the queue. Got my bags. Been, like I said, the best holiday in the world. Fucking, here I am. 50 quid. What? Cash. What? I need 50 quid in cash. Yep. No pesos, no fucking fifty pounds. Yep. In Mexico, they want fifty pounds of you to get yep. back out. Yep. That's the uh, that that's the uh, that's a kickback. Aye. No, they, they come here and they hit you with a hard luck story. Maybe they don't hit you personally, but I'm sure they're somewhere hitting somebody with a hard luck story somewhere, right? And we buy them hotel accommodation and we buy them pizza and we give them a mobile phone and nice shoes. They all get nice shoes. Have you noticed they all get nice shoes? Yep. Check mine. Like, no fucking shit. No shit. I'm running about with Look at that. Fucking worn out fucking. They've got nice Adidas. I've got crappy Crocs. Nearly worn out. Trying to give a thank you to my catch fire. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's a let's face it, it's a lot of shite. All of it. See if they say it's this, and you look into it, you find out it's not at all. See if they say, "Oh, look at all these poor, bombed out fucking economic migrants that turned out to be." But you're not allowed to say, "Oh, wait a minute. Do you think we could maybe check these people's papers?" Racist. You are a racist. You want to look at people's documentation and ensure that they came to somewhere where they said they came to. Look, they, Aye. look, they, they, they That's came one from... lie. An immigration officer, he'd be fucking banged up overnight while they figured out why you were lying to them. They'd have to finger right up your shit and everything to make sure you never had any, I don't know, unexploded bombs or something up your bum, whatever it is you put up your bum. You know? Drugs. I went like that, right? You know, you know what I'm saying? You can't even speak out a turn to them, but they can march all over Europe. Come in here stinking. Stinking because I've not had a bath for six months. Yep. Chucked a passport in the water. Yep. 
Because that. Hey, come in, come in. Might have hung up the beach for that Kalashnikov. You get it? You go to, You can manage to meet me, aye. I quite like. Uh, I quite like what hungry. What hungry did around their border. They put up. Uh, they put up a. I don't think we're shooting at them often, enough, but... Oh, see. <laughs> Hungry Peter... Go on! <laughs> I get three up in a row, mate. <laughs> Hungry Peter, Hungry Peter, Peter fence up, and then they put another fence 200 yards behind that, which created them a nice wee bit to drive around in. They have their army in there, they have dogs in there, they have people... Driving around, there's a road and all. Um, when I don't have a problem with economic migrants. Oh, but here, here's the beauty of it. See the first fans. They don't. They the, send them all back. Every one. Yes, but their first fans is five hundred yards inside Hungarian territory. So whenever they put them back out of the fence, they're still in Hungary. And the person has made the decision to go back to the previous country themselves. And that's why they don't you have must admit, You must admit, they use a bit of finesse of Hungarians, don't they? Yes. Uh, uh, I think it's a great country. Yep. They, a golden they don't land need... of opportunity. They tried, to, they, tra- they tried to take them to court for expelling the migrants. And the Hungar- Hungarians went here, hold on, we haven't uh, expelled any migrants. You're gonna to have to drop back cases. Why says whenever we put them back through that gate, they're still hungry. And Fifty feet inside, hungry. <laughs> yep, uh, they're, they're still hungry. They can, they can, they can do whatever they want, and they choose to go back to sure. the previous country. I mean, do you know? I think it's fair. I mean, seriously, right? All right, people say, "Oh, this you've got an opinion on it." Aye, everybody. They might be frightened to speak. Everybody's got some opinion on something. Always right. Yep. Do you know? Think we're full. Simple as that. Do you not think we're full? Do you think that we, we could actually look down and say, wait a minute, we've got so many people here that we don't have houses for? Food supply chain, they've now started filling, what is it? It's no crematoriums, it's some auditoriums. They're filling auditoriums in cities because putting bunks and because they've got that many people. <laughs> Does not none of these people in government stand back and think, wait a minute, this this is getting out of fucking hand here. What are we doing? Not one of them seems to be standing up and saying, I think we should reevaluate this situation here. We seem to be having a problem with these people because we can't kind of treat them right. Yeah. There's a mad woman with 50 cats. They come up and take a fucking cats off her, but we're stuffing them in willy nilly and it's people, human lives. The whole place is fucking nuts, right? It is currently coming up to come towards half twelve. I'm going to shut this down in about five or ten minutes, uh, because I have to actually go to work tomorrow. Uh, because the place I work at, I see that busy uptake that never comes. Well, it's it's hit our place at the minute, but it's only going to last for, <laughs> for the next two weeks. The right? <laughs> yeah, the happy stick. Right. Well, well, we've got a bump, and we're bit. I've been busy for the last two weeks. I'm going to be busy for the next week and a half, probably, and then I'll be back to fucking uh, whatever and normal. Oh yeah, uh, get some of that sweet no. overtime while it happens. Yep, uh-huh. <laughs> Billy. This is Saturday. I'm on. I'm on Sunday for overtime because uh, that that's exactly it. Get a fucking get it when it's there. Because <laughs> it's not going, it's not going to be there in two to three weeks' time. So I've had a decent run out. So anything else you want to talk about just before we go? No. Uh, <laughs> it's been a pleasure being back on your show. It it has been a real pleasure uh, talking to you. Uh, I I enjoy, enjoyed the chat tonight, and. I'm looking up a video to get on for get me outro sort of. That's me. Right. It ha- yeah, it ha- mate, I'm really glad to see you back on. I enjoyed the crack and the chat. All good as always. Uh, 
And with that, I'm going to line up the intro and that will be us. Share screen. Here we go. Oh, um, this is the YouTube version of Harmony, Melody and Rain. And if you want the album version with the guitar solo and the level slightly up and whatnot, that will be coming on Spotify soon and I will let you know. Okay. Hello, this is 42 speaking. Welcome to the resistance. You are not alone, and we shall walk this journey together. What about you, John? If one brings a guitar and one brings a voice, then they stand together and make their own choice. Let us gather together those that can perform, and from the scarred timbers build our own platform. From that grand house they tried to burn down, there's gold in the ashes if you look around. Let us gather together those that can perform, then from those scarce timbers build our own platform. Build our own platform. We will sing words of wisdom. We will sing. As our country was sold, did you really think we'd leave that story untold? So one brings a guitar and one brings a voice. Then they stand together and make their own choice. They have seen the future, the way forward is clear. Among us still stands a modern day Shakespeare. They have seen the future, the way forward is clear. Among us still stands a modern day Shakespeare. Stand by as our country was sold. Did you really think we'd leave that story untold? We will sing words of wisdom. We will sing. We will sing.
say words of wisdom. We will say you for all time. We will say you for our people. Harmony, melody, and pride. We will say words of wisdom. We will say you for all time. We will say you for our people with the ancient trilogy of harmony, melody. Okay, everybody, uh, uh, Slim with Slim, I've been 42, and you lot in the chat have, as always, been fucking amazing. Thank you, good night, God bless, and see you all next week. I'm out of here, gone, goodbye.